Stoicism is a school of philosophy founded by Zeno of Sidium in Athens in the early 3rd century BC. But how can Stoicism help the INFJ? After listening to these eight rules, you'll know. Number one, you decide whether to worry about something or not. It's your choice. Us INFJs tend to worry, like a lot. But the Greek Stoic philosopher Epictetus said, Make the best use of what is in your power, and take the rest as it happens. If something's not in your control, any energy you spend thinking about it is actually wasted energy. This includes people, work, or even society at large. Remember, too, the words of the Stoic philosopher Seneca. What I advise you to do is not to be unhappy before the crisis comes. So, in other words, whatever time you spend worrying about a crisis before it actually comes is actually adding to the total amount of suffering that you'll experience. So consider carefully choosing what to worry about and put the rest, especially those things you can't control, out of your mind. Number two, people are facts. Consider not resenting them. Author Robert Greene said that people are facts. This simply means that people are largely unchangeable and that we should just accept them at face value for who they prove themselves to be. While I do believe people can change, I also think it's rare and difficult and that the only people who can be changed are the people that want to be changed. We can't be good enough counselors or coaches to help those who don't want to change. Roman emperor, philosopher, and fellow INFJ, Marcus Aurelius, didn't like people very much. This is clear from his writings. In his book, Meditations, he writes, When you wake up in the morning, tell yourself, the people I deal with today will be meddling, ungrateful, arrogant, dishonest, jealous, and surly. But he goes on to say, people have no power over me, and none of them can hurt me. And because he made sure that he behaved rightly, he said that nobody could implicate him in any evil or ugliness. And that is true for us INFJs as well. People may try to make us feel like outcasts or misfits, but unless we've done something wrong, they have no right to hurt us. In fact, in reality, they can't hurt us unless we give them that power. Now, I understand that we're all going to feel hurt when we're snubbed or looked over or mistreated, but we do have the ability to control this or at least get it under control quickly. Stoic philosopher Epictetus said the following, Another person will not do you harm unless you wish it. Now, one of the greatest strengths of INFJs is to absorb the energy of others. Now, this is a great power, but honestly, it's probably one that's hurt us continually throughout our lives. So remember this quote when you're burdened with the baggage of other people or when other people do hurtful things to you. They have no power to hurt you except what you give them, and it's time to consider denying them that power. And in actuality, when you deal with these frustrating people, you can actually become stronger, more patient, and more resilient. Number three, you don't have to think about things or have an opinion about things that do not affect your life. INFJs are some of the best thinkers on the planet, but that skill sometimes becomes a burden when we begin to overthink. The fact is not everything is deserving of you forming an opinion about it. Marcus Aurelius said that you always have the power not to have an opinion about something. So maybe it's gossip that's pointless or other people's drama. We see this with the news all the time. They want to get you riled up. They want to get you to form an opinion. They want to get a rise out of you. But let other people think about those things. If those things are not affecting your life, consider putting them out of your mind. These things don't even have to be on your radar. Forming an opinion uses your valuable INFJ energy, and we only have so much. Epictetus said, What upsets people is not things themselves, but their judgments about these things. So consider what is worth your opinion, what is worth your judgment, what is worth your energy. If this video is helping you, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the INFJ circle. Number four, consider focusing on the present moment. INFJs are future thinkers, and let's be honest, that's probably not going to change. One of the reasons that we live in the future is because we are excellent at predicting future outcomes. However, we can certainly consider enhancing our lives by focusing in on the present moment and enjoying it to its fullest. Seneca said, the whole future lies in uncertainty. Live immediately. There's inner peace and contentment waiting for the INFJ who embraces this concept. To help you be more present, consider exercise, reading, spending time with family, being in nature, these types of things. Any activity that gets you out of your mind and more in touch with the physical world. Still, remember that only about 8% of the population excels at predicting future outcomes. So don't feel bad for being a future thinker. It's actually a great strength. But when you're feeling overburdened or you feel like you're overthinking, use some of the techniques that I just mentioned to get your mind healthy again. Number five, other people's opinions are just, well, their opinion. 
We are INFJs. We are great thinkers. And when it comes to important matters, we should not hesitate to trust our opinions. And we shouldn't value other people's opinions more than our own. If people think you're strange or they don't like what you're doing, you need to look at them and see if you like what they are doing. If these other people are the opposite of what you want to be, then it's actually good that they don't like what you're doing. In fact, if they did like what you were doing, then you would be going in the opposite direction of where you should be going. INFJs should always consider honestly whether they're falling into the people-pleasing trap. As INFJs, we should consider taking back some of the power that we often give others over our lives. Epictetus said that when we allow other people to determine how we feel, we're actually handing over our emotions to them and giving them control of our emotions. INFJs are too important to this world to let others just have the power to destroy them. Number six, don't let external things determine the quality of your life or your day. Marcus Aurelius said, it's time you realize that you have something in you more powerful and miraculous than the things that affect you and make you dance like a puppet. Do you know what that is? That's your INFJ mind and your INFJ personality. And you are worthy to make decisions for yourself about what is right and what is worth reacting to. As an INFJ, you are known for your fairness and justice-oriented mindset. Other people don't have a monopoly on you, and they don't have the right to determine whether you're happy or sad today. Do not give them that right. That is your right. In addition, worry and anxiety about the events in our life are also under our control to a great extent. Marcus Aurelius said, Today I escaped anxiety, or no, I discarded it, because it was within me, in my own perceptions, not outside. Now, can you get rid of all pain and become a robot? Of course not. But you do have much more power than you think when it comes to escaping anxiety. Remember, you have control. Number seven, you can't fix everything, so consider not stressing over things you can't change. Some events in life simply cannot be changed, and some people don't want to change, and they don't want help. And this is often hard for us INFJs to comprehend. By our logic, if someone could make a huge improvement to their life by implementing some small and simple habit that would take a few minutes of effort a day, of course that person would want to do that. So we want to be the ones to teach them. But sadly, this is not the case with many people. Many people won't take any positive action at all, and they resent the person, usually us, who informs them that they could improve. And this is especially true if the path to their improvement is simple and takes little time or effort. This removes their excuse for not taking action, and that makes people very angry at us for bringing it up. Us INFJs love self-improvement, and we love seeing it in others. But sadly, most don't share our love for progress. Epictetus said, If you want to improve, be content to be thought foolish and stupid. That means we should realize that most people don't seek improvement. And, in fact, they may belittle those who are seeking to improve themselves. The INFJ has no room in their life for these types of people. As soon as you detect that you're dealing with one of these types of people, consider interacting with them shallowly and moving on. Number eight, consider abstaining from worry about evil in the world that you cannot control. Epictetus said, Where then do I look for good and evil? Not to uncontrollable externals, but within myself, to the choices that are my own. If you can control your own choices and your own moral actions, you are doing well. Looking outward to a corrupt world and spending time thinking about it is not fruitful for the INFJ. If you haven't purposely hurt anyone, you are not responsible for any wrongdoing. As I stated in a previous point, even trying to help people makes them sometimes try and make us feel like we did something wrong. Now that does hurt, but we do have the power to move on from these hurtful events quickly, and we have the power to know our own INFJ strength, not allowing others to make us feel guilty for things we did that weren't even wrong. So we should consider putting our effort into the things that we can control. And the one area where we have the most control is within ourselves. So this video's mantra is the following. I will not give others the power to determine my emotions. My emotions are under my power alone. Every week I send out an INFJ-inspired email that has to do with psychology, philosophy, ancient wisdom, everything you need in order to live a better INFJ life. It's completely free, and if you'd like to join a rapidly growing community of INFJs who are looking to learn, grow, and belong, consider subscribing. The link is in the description. The truth is, INFJs often stand out from other personality types, and they're often left out and rejected as well. If you've ever wondered the real reason why other people reject INFJs, consider watching this video next.